Hello my fellow hominids, welcome to Rambling of a Cyan Twist. Now, good news is I have a very limited amount of time to do this video, and so it will not be drawn out overly long and overly complicated. So let's get started. First and foremost, I am talking about an aspect of global warming, because global warming t encompasses many different things. The one I'm particularly talking about is one affecting the ocean ecosystems called ocean acidification. So I'm going to make sure I do not overcomplicate this with terms because I know how freaked out that can make people. So let's get started by letting you know that since the industrial revolution, we have been burning off fossil fuels from gas, coal. You, you guys have heard this stuff before, I'm sure. And about 30% of that has been absorbed by our ocean since the industrial revolution. Now, 30% doesn't sound like a whole much. And, but if you look at it on actual calculations, it has been calculated to be 1 million tons per hour. Okay, 1 million tons of carbon, carbon dioxide per hour. And let's just say this, that percentage, that 30% that gets absorbed into the ocean takes away from global warming, so it is a healing factor, but it causes our oceans to become a little more acidic because of the chemistry of the CO2 interacting with stuff in the water. And essentially what that means is that the one thing that takes, that breaks down the CO2 to make it acidic is essentially taking away the, the, the calcium carbonate, which makes up seashells and skeletons of animals that live in the ocean. And it is a vital nutrient for a lot of metabolic processes of the animals and the ocean itself. So let's, let's recap real quick. So we burn off a lot of fossil fuels and that fossil fuels make CO2, carbon dioxide, which we also exhale out into our atmosphere. Now this compound, or not compound, excuse me, this essential thing started is what helped transform our planet to become, to have an atmosphere because it kept stuff in and it kept UV radiation out. But since we have been accumulating it ever since the industrial revolution, when we started excess burning off this material, it has been making it difficult for sunlight to escape our atmosphere. So our, 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 uh, our planet has been warming. And because of that, just like, let's just make this analogy real quick. You, everyone has had a can of soda pop or a can of soda or whatever, your Pepsi, your Coke, your Dr. Pepper. You know the bubbles in that are carbon dioxide because they pump it full of CO2 so it makes it fizzy. And everyone knows that that stuff rots your teeth out of your brain because it's so acidic. And it's acidic not just because of the high amount of sugars that the bacteria like in your mouth like to feed off of, but because the CO2, the carbon dioxide in the soda is actually what degrades your teeth and the calcium off your teeth. And I don't know if anyone else heard about this recently, but there was a study done recently that talked about people that consume a large amount of soda tend to put themselves at higher risks of breaking bones and becoming more susceptible to osteoporosis when they become aged because all that soda that you're drinking, all that CO2 you're taking into your body is breaking down your own skeleton. <laughs> now that's scary. So let's backtrack back to our original topic. Now I did a research review prop paper that essentially accumulated about 15 different resources about ocean acidification on different ocean habitats and communities. And this accumulation that I was able to write a paper on is, is respect to response to how these habitats and the organisms in these habitats will respond as the acidity continues to increase from our continual consumption of CO2 and carbon dioxide from fossil fuels like burning gas, coal, fires, and general human activities. Now, I know you guys might be a little fudgy on the actual chemistry, which I'm not going to press that guy that on you because it's a little intense. But let me just say this, and you guys can look it up if you are more interested yourselves, that when CO2 comes into contact with the ocean, is absorbed by the water, it turns into calcium, it, it attaches to calcium carbonate and essentially makes the water more acidic and lowers the pH by that. So... 
This chemical reaction in the oceans causes a lot of animals that rely on calcium, like corals, seashells, like and also fish that make and whales and everything that essentially has a hard part in their body needs calcium in order to survive or and essentially the higher co2 content in the water the more they will dissolve essentially they will melt to death in their own water in their own environment it's it's a rather horrible thing to watch now on the off hand what the whole concept of biology is that one thing that is toxic to one is is actually a nutrient for another and because of the increase in co2 there are some organisms and plants that will actually thrive in a higher acidic water, which include a lot of phytoplankton and seagrasses. Now, that doesn't sound like a necessarily bad thing on paper. It's like, well, if we have more seagrasses, then it'll take more of the CO2 out and it'll make the water more oxygenated. And then there's also phytoplankton, which you need to be concerned about phytoplankton blooms because a lot of them become, become toxic to other animals. And we got stuff like red tides, which everyone knows pretty much what a red tide is. It's essentially death in the water. Furthermore, a lot of people have been saying, or people that have claimed that global warming is a hoax and it's like, well, we're just going through a cycle of our planet. Now, part of that, the cycling of our planet is true, however, if you look at paleontological evidence, like history of our planet, that has, during times where have we have seen fluctuations in the acidity of the oceans recorded in rocks, those have coincided with large mass extinctions. And that's exactly how the history of the Earth is divided, is essentially when we had a large extinction event that as the end of a period of time. And we've had very large amounts of mass extinction, some of which is like 80% of life on the planet, which is dead. And there is a correlation with the water becoming overly acidic during that time. Now that's a factor. We're still conducting research to determine whether or not that was a main cause or that was a side effect of something happening. Now the scary part is, is that Yes, we're having not, uh, there's a natural cycle of the acidity and the CO2 of our planet, but because of the industrial revolution and our massive increase of pulling back all that CO2 that was trapped in our, in the earth into the atmosphere, we're accelerating that process and we may be accelerating an extinction event in our current history far faster than anything we've seen in the past history of earth. Now here's another thing to consider. Ocean pH or the how acidic our oceans are can vary quite drastically depending on where you are on the planet, the season, uh, currents, there's a lot of things. I'll list off a few real quick. Season, depth, regional variations, physical and biological factors that include temp, how salty the water is, upwelling essentially when there's a current or a draft that brings up all the nutrients from the deep depths of the dark ocean up to the surface for other organisms to utilize. Water currents, river runoff, sea ice melt, photosynthesis, respiration, calcification, and dissolution. So essentially every metabolic process that goes on the ocean can affect its own composition. So how can we say that this isn't a factor like, oh, well, maybe particularly where this study was done was natural for it to have this cycle. But if you look on all of this as an average, all these different studies done on different parts of the planet on average have increased. And we are already starting to see the side effects in terms of like the temperature increase, which also affects pH. And that's what we're having a lot of our coral reefs on our planet are starting to die off because they can't handle they don't know how to react so they start dumping a lot of their of the of what they need to survive and essentially die off but another thing to keep in mind also that the change in the pH of our oceans actually affects our seasons and vice versa so we it's actually been noticed the trend just recently that the changes in pH in our oceans has actually affected us having milder winters in some parts of the world, which is a very significant thing considering the changes in seasons change how our oceans cycle. So, for example, during the winter, some places experience upwelling where there is a current that comes up from the deeper depths to actually push 
nutrients and all the dead stuff that is sunk down to the bottom to become available again to stuff at the top. And that causes uh, like a higher abundance just life to continue thriving. Now, with milder winters, we don't get this as much. So stuff that requires and just depends on that upwelling certain times of the year is going to start dying off because they're not going to get access to it as much anymore. And furthermore, if that stuff doesn't get ventilated from the deep depths of the ocean, we're going to have large pockets of possible anaerobic activity, which can include methane buildup. And so I don't know if any one of you has particularly known about methane gas bubbles in the ocean, but if you get a big enough one, it could sink a tanker and it's, there's nothing you can do. It's just literally just goes, goes under and everyone, there's nobody can get escape it. Now, most of the studies done on ocean acidification in terms of on animals or invertebrates in particular, and these include phytoplankton that rely on having a hard shell to protect themselves. A lot of shellfish, like clams and oysters, and then there's also echinoderms or starfish, uh, m members of the starfish family, and then fish. Now, uh, the acidity of the water dissolving their skeletons, that's a big factor, and it can actually kill them before they can even reach an adult stage to be reproductive. And furthermore, if they even are reproductive and say, this little organism is trying to grow up, it will be, be deformed because it cannot collect enough calcium to make its skeleton. And essentially it looks like this melted blob of, of calcium and it's a rather terrible thing. And this affects a lot of things. And the studies that have, they have done on fish in particular, this doesn't necessarily affect their development, but it affects their sensors, their sensory perception. Like they can't smell as well, and their survival rate has gone down by 74% in some of these studies. And you think, well, how does that affect me personally? Now, okay, ocean acidification, if stuff in the ocean cannot grow, and this is even on the food chain level. So let's say, you like oysters or you like clams or you like abalone. Now, a lot of the stuff that these animals feed off of need calcium to, to grow. And if there's not a lot of them around, then it's going to affect the rest of the food chain. So if you have one collapse of one primary organism that oysters or clams or particularly your favorite food source likes to eat, your food source is going to become scarce. And you can just see the, the price levels of oysters and clams going higher than they are normally. And furthermore, crabs will be affected, all crustaceans. And then if our fish population essentially drops off because of the rest of the collapse of our ocean, no more seafood. Yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Now, I know I kind of rushed through this. And I wanted to make sure I got through the major points because this paper that I've been that I wrote and I've been basing all of this discussion off of is 15 pages long and I did not want to subject you guys to that in-depth level of stuff. But the summary of the entire study that I reviewed from all these different papers have been that change is imminent. We can do our best to slow the processes down, to try and buffer the change of, of the ocean so that way animals can have a moment to adapt. That way they don't get shot down before they even have a chance to, to, to adjust to the, to the change. And I know now that the, one of the major problems that people are having with the change of the planet right now in terms of global warming and the extinction events that we may be foreseeing in the immediate future is that we, this change, the, this stage of global warming is affected by us. We help accelerate this and our impact on the planet is starting to show its repercussions. We just don't want to take the blame for the mass genocide of thousands of species and possible orders of, of, of the world, of the planet. And we need to at least start taking responsibility to taking better care of our planet and having a less impact of, on our planet in terms of greener living. Now the most that we can do in terms of current life is to try and lessen our impact as minute as it may be. Just even not using plastic bags or being conscious of what you're putting in 
the garbage or what you're using or even your detergent in your dish soap. Really, we have to start slowing down our activities just to give our planet a chance to, to, to adapt in a buffer. And it looks pretty dreary right now in terms of the change in our oceans. And what I'm asking for you, for you guys as the world essentially, is to pay attention to these studies and don't just pass them off and to start really taking responsibility for the actions of our species on this planet that we call home. Because if we don't, then we're gonna see an entire food web collapse. We will not only just see the entire ocean essentially die off and our one of our major resources is gone, but it will affect the rest of the planet in this domino effect of chaos. So I don't mean to be doing gloom and gloom and I hope to have more better news in terms of studies because we have to continue researching this in order to try and get an idea on how to combat this and how to s accept the processes that are taking place. So I love you guys. If you guys like this, like this video, comment. If you, if you love it, hate it, you think I'm a weirdo, whatever. Mwah. Bye my hominids. Bye.